what art? Well, I'm honored to be uh, interviewed by the first Pakistani. First Pakistani. Yes. Am I right? Yes, exactly. Okay, I am so honored. Thank you so and much. And I, I, I will go down in history. Thank so. you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hello, guys. I hope you're doing well. This is Sayyid Muhammad Shamoil Shis, a certified safety professional and OSHA authorized outreach trainer. Uh, I am also having uh, 13 years of dedicated occupational safety and health experience. But what kind of the person I'm meeting right now, it's really amazing. So I'm having uh, James in front of me, uh, who's going to be an upcoming president of ASSP, and that would be the tenure for 2023 and 24. Uh, he's a certified safety professional, CIH, and FASSP, the fellow member, an amazing profile I do have. I will explain you later on everything. He has uh, contributed a lot in, into this field and he's amazing guy in front of me and i'm going to interview him and that is the privilege for me being a pakistani being the first pakistani to interview the person who is not in front of you yet so hi james how are you i hope you're doing well i'm doing well and, and please call me jim my hi. mother calls me james so oh. That's, That's you amazing. Can, you, you can call me Jim if you like. Okay, okay. Jim. So, uh, how are you doing right now? Um, I'm doing fine. The session just opened. We had a good opening session, and we've got a couple or three more days of uh, of adventure here in our in our professional conference. So, doing very well. Things are going smoothly right now. That's really amazing. Uh, my, I have few questions uh, that would be helpful for me and for other safety professionals. How do you see ASSP international chapters uh, to contribute into that particular regions that are still in the growing stages like Pakistan has? And we are contributing a lot. But once again, what kind of the help uh, you can contribute and, and what do you see in the upcoming year in your tenure? Well, we encourage international development, uh, Pakistan and other countries as well. Um, safety is universal. There are different cultures, uh, of course, but uh, the importance of sending people, workers back home safely to their families is a universal language. And we must work together with Pakistanis and other uh, non-U.S. Uh, countries to uh, do a good job of sending people back home as they as they came to us. That's really amazing. Do you have any specific goals within your tenure that you're going to improve from the previous one? Definitely, we do learn a lot from our mistakes and the opportunities we have. So what do you think uh, you will be doing in your coming tenure that, that would be much better than the previous one? Well, I think the one thing we're working on currently and will finish during my term is our strategic plan. We need to understand better how the uh, practice of occupational safety and health has changed. And accordingly, we need to uh, develop and implement programs that embrace those changes. And so, so one of the things I'm very excited about is developing uh, uh, the completing the strategic plan, which will then guide us and provide a template for other all occupational safety and health members, irrespective of country. Uh, I, I think it's important to have a plan. And so you must plan first and execute later. So having that plan developed and offering it to other countries and other professionals is high on my list. The other thing is important to me is, is including our uh, diversity, equity, and, inclu and inclusion programs. Workers come from many uh, disciplines, from many cultures, from many backgrounds, and we need, as a society, as, as safety and health professionals, we need uh, those people to, to be able to speak the language, to understand the culture, and all facets of uh, workplace safety and health that benefit those workers. Those are, that's very important that we advance that as well. The third thing that I'm very interested in is continuous uh, education of our existing safety professionals. We must learn learn and learn again. We can't be content to operate with the knowledge that we have. We need to improve it, expand on it, and uh, those are kind of three quick things that, uh, and there, there are many others, there are many others, but those are kind of high on my list. 
that's really appreciated that you're working in that particular ways and areas that really needs much more improvement i believe now two most important questions from pakistan land the very first question would there be any opportunities for pakistani safety professionals that are holding uh, certified safety professionals and other other privileged qualifications that are renowned and accepted uh, specifically in us because when we used to come from that land to here we need to have h1b visa or certain sponsorship so uh, would you be able to contribute uh, your certain uh, things that the companies over here would welcome those professionals that are having the opportunities they can have uh, along with those particular professionals maybe i don't understand exactly the concept you're uh, talking about so could you expand on it just a little bit more? yes 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 basically uh, there are a lot of the safety professionals that are willing to do the particular jobs of occupational health and safety in us yeah. but whenever they are applying they got rejected due to their visa status oh. uh, so the companies here needs to provide the sponsorship visa to them and uh, that's what i do understand that's a tricky process but uh, would you able to uh, raise your voice with those companies that they do encourage the people from pakistan to apply here and then they uh, provide them the assistance and sponsorship all those things understand what i would like to do is uh and this is not necessarily a good answer but i'd like to have a conversa a longer conversation with you uh, if there is something that is we are is within our capability to make that happen of course we would be open to that and so but i am not understanding the visa yeah, all of the all of the uh all of the tentacles yes. of the of that program so but i would tell you whatever we can do within our capacity of course we would we would uh welcome that that would be perfect guys this is something really very important and there is no one to raise this voice and uh, to contribute and to discuss with the professionals so i will try to contribute my uh, my vision i will try to elaborate my visions to him so that you guys can be benefited all over pakistan the last important question jim is uh, that we are having one major issue related to the salaries salary brackets we don't have any kind of the regulatory uh, reforms or regulations that we can at least privilege safety professionals they are underpaid in pakistan and that is reality but a reality uh, due to no regulations present at a time at this time so we used to raise the voice from different platforms like assp is one of the wonderful platform we can do that so can you uh, highlight or can you do something for that so that we can regular regularize a minimum salary bracket uh, in every region and specifically in pakistan what do you suggest can we do something uh, from this platform to fix at least this much minimum salary for occupational health and safety professionals specifically those who hold assp professional membership or the student membership they would be privileged Yeah I think that um number 1 I think that uh we should have even more occupational safety and health professionals uh in Pakistan and other countries all yes. countries second is uh we talked a little bit before we came on about different cultures and what is uh uh and differences in cultures where in US uh standards are very important they're enforced there are fines and prison time and penalties and i'm not, confess i don't know the uh i don't know the requirements or what the appetite for uh enforcement is in pakistan uh i would but i would say with more occupational safety and health professionals who can make the case to their own companies of the importance of whether it is a financial burden or not but the moral case for sending someone home back to his or her own own family at the end of the day is an important it's a universal uh it's a it's a universal moral obligation to do that so in spite of the fact that there may not be governing uh statutes which are in force i believe there 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 must be a moral high ground for uh occupational safety and health professionals and i think this comes under the heading of soft skills meaning how do i 
in, in, uh, in spite of the fact there's no regulation that I can point to. How can I use my soft skills to convince my management yes. of doing the right thing? Exactly. Is it the money? Is it the moral obligation? Uh, there are many reasons. So that's why we need to have the continuing training of occupational safety and health professionals who can, this is my word, market safety. Yes. That's really amazing things that I'm learning from James. And uh, one last question to you. Do you encourage the safety qualifications around the world? Uh, because we have a lot of the qualifications, a lot of the certifications that are not regularized even. Uh, private institutions are trying to deliver the certificates to uh, a lot of the candidates and they do because they are uh, from US. Uh, but if they are not accredited, then I believe so that that would not be a value addition to their uh, personal professional career. So how do you think that ASSP would be contributing towards regularization of all those companies working here in US or all around the world and using the uh, platform or this land, name of this land? So would you be contributing your part uh, from ASSP to ask them to be accredited or at least get the memberships from ASSP so that they can be recognized well? And then if somebody is having their qualifications, they would be recognized too. Right. Um the certification body in the U.S. is the Board of Certified Safety Professionals who have their uh, examinations and qualifications, pre-qualifications uh, for certification. ASSE, ASSP, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, that was a terrible slip. Uh, ASSP um, is very, uh, the important thing there is we recognize accredited schools for education purposes, uh, that sort of thing. And so I think it important uh, that that certificate certification should be taken very seriously and it should be earned by virtue of education and experience and not mail fill, fill out the uh, form and send the check in and you get your badge back. So I think it's very serious. So I think the, as far as uh, across the globe, I think the model of certification for America, and I'm not trying to say America is better than any, anyone, but it's a pretty good model to to maybe try to replicate in whether whatever country it might be. Is it a hard thing to do? Of course it is, but nothing good is easy, say. That's really amazing uh, because I've been into the Rutgers, uh, New Jersey. I did my OSHA courses from there and it was amazing. Yes, definitely. You're absolutely right. We have to input our whole time there. We have to input some thing, some of our precious time. That is why we, we just get the value back. So it was really amazing, Jim. And uh, I'm privileged to have you on board, have your interview very first interview and I believe that I'm the first Pakistani getting uh, you on board and interviewing. Well, I am honored. Uh, I hope I've said something that would be helpful yes, to some two people. Uh, and when I take office July the 1st, I talk about some of the things that are my personal interests and we hope will benefit all safety professionals, whether in the U.S., Pakistan, or other countries. So I am very humble and very honored uh, to be in this position and to have members to have elect me. And I'm going to try very hard to do a good job to benefit workers, or, or not only in the U.S., but around the world, to go home to their families at the end of the day. So guys, um, this is Jim and a really amazing person I met and uh, again, I'm saying that this is really very important to implement occupational health and safety standards within your own country, own regions, own companies, because this is something if you don't take it seriously, then definitely in terms of financial uh, losses not in only in terms of financial losses but you can bear the lives you do we don't have to we can afford the losses of life that we are currently facing all over the world in those regions that are underdeveloping so thank you james and uh, we wish you best of luck for your upcoming tenure and uh, i really uh, say thank you uh, for being uh, my 
guest for the very first time and I'm privileged, I'm honored. Well, I'm honored to be uh, interviewed by the first Pakistani. First Pakistani. Yes. Am I right? Yes, exactly. Okay, I am so honored. Thank you so and much. And I, I, I will go down in history. Thank so. you so much. Thank <laughs> you so much. So I'll be meeting you uh, in next upcoming sessions and everywhere I can meet you, I'll be in a stay uh, connected with you and uh, definitely I'll publish this on my website and ASSP Pakistan chapter is going to be privileged with this particular interview. And, it, and if I can help the, the chapter in any way, I want to be very accessible to you. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. you.